Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's upload is going to be an El Nino discussion. And I have already made, I think, several of these. They have been fairly popular. People seem to like these. I get a lot of um, really nice comments about these type of videos. So I decided to make another one. If you like these type of videos, if you like these type of updates, consider subscribing to my channel. You can see my channel is titled MBGC Combo, which you are right on right now. 4,123 subscribers. And what you are right now on the video that you're watching, just scroll down and it'll be a subscribe button. And I wish I would show you right here if you went to my actual channel my like my actual home page and there would be a subscribe button right here but I don't because I'm the creator so I can't really subscribe to my own channel but um, consider subscribing consider liking the video that's basically all I'm saying it's all up to you so um, I already tried making this video once and it turned out to be way longer than I wanted it to be so I'm making this video another time or in a second time because I want it to keep it around 10 minutes so Summary, first off, ENCO neutral conditions are present right now across the equatorial Pacific, or I should say ENSO, I, I said ENCO, did I? I meant to say ENSO, neutral conditions are present. So, um, equatorial sea surface temperatures, SST, are near to above average across most of the Pacific Ocean. There's a 50 to 55% chance of an El Nino onset during the Northern Hemisphere Fall 2018, which are these months, increasing to a 65 to 75% during winter 2018-2019. So again, um, there is uh, the, the chances for an El Nino of some sort, an El Nino emphasis on some sort, are, are you know, fairly high, but they aren't over the board. So I, I let's... There's a lot of information here that I'll be skipping. You could check this out. Just type in ENCO Outlook and you'll get what I'm looking at right now. It is a very, very good website, but I don't have time to show you all this. I want to keep this a quick little video. So the latest weekly SST departures and the L yeah, El Nino region in general, the equatorial Pacific, is divided into um, four regions. It's called the Nino 4, Nino 3.4, Nino 3, and Nino 1, and 1 and plus 2. You can see right by the uh, right by the South American coast, Nino 1 and 2, it has been below average, but everywhere everywhere else, the waters have been getting warmer and warmer. So that is indicative of a El Nino of some sort. Again, emphasis on that. You can see here is basically the anomalies are currently happening. And I'm just going to skip forward because there's a lot of information information here that I wouldn't want to really um, include be due to the fact this will be a very would mean a very long video so this is something I'd like also like to quickly look at Nino El Nino conditions are typically 0 0.5 Celsius or higher and La Nina conditions are typically 0 0.5 um, degrees or and below that and that is what I'll show you exactly what that means but in a minute so this is a chart of the past uh, ten, 12 years. And what we're looking at right now is a bunch of La Ninos, El Ninos, neutral conditions. And as you could see, that it, the neutral extends from 0 0.4 um, negative to 0 0.4, let's see, 0 0.4 positive. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. I only see negative. Zero. Okay, there's a 0 0.4. And anywhere in between that, that is a neutral. However, as it gets what I was talking about earlier, above 0 0.5, that is an El Nino. Below 0 0.5, that is considered a La Nina. So I'll explain what an La Nina effects are and what the El Nino effects are in just a minute. But first, let's just look at, the, again, the chances of an El Nino. You can see that's basically what I said at the beginning. 65 to 70% during Northern Hemisphere winter. And you can see during these three major months of winter, it will be at least 60% or higher for an El Nino of some sort to develop. Now, <clears throat> I was saying some sort because of a couple of different reasons. First off, you can see that even if an El Nino develops, which we're not even confident 100% on because it's 60%, um, the other 40 to 35% is probably a neutral staying or an ENCO staying neutral. But um, you can see that those chances, I think, are diminishing further and further as we speak. But the models, these three, the statistical average, the DYN average, and the CPC console are, I think that's DYN, can't really read that well from here, but this, these three lines, hopefully you can see them, they're green, the red, and blue, are all showing below a one, um, L, one degree above average El Nino, but between that 0 0.5, so that would classify as an El Nino, but just barely, so that is considered a weak El Nino, and a weak El Nino has completely different impacts from a 
Um, the weak El Nino has completely different impacts from a strong El Nino or just a moderate El Nino. So if you're wondering what an El Nino, just a regular old moderate El Nino looks like, and a major one looks something like this. You can see moderate El Nino is warm and dry across the north, especially the Midwest, and then wet and cool across the south. <clears throat> including parts of the East Coast um, being wet and cooler. So that maybe would be beneficial for parts of the East Coast, but for much of the United States, it would be warm. And you can see that jet stream that would bring those cold conditions, that uh, would that would allow those um, bitter ar Arctic fronts to drop into the United States is just way up north into Canada, but uh, with an El Nino. However, there's a catch to this, and this is a fairly big catch. So, right, there's this thing called an El Nino Madoki, Madokai, and the chances overall, I would be saying right now, are definitely diminishing for an El Nino Madokai. Um, at the beginning of the year, somewhere in July, August, I was more confident in El Nino Madoki. Right now, I would be saying that uh, the chances are definitely diminishing, but they are, they are, um, they are still there. So, when they talk about an El Nino forming, El Nino Madoka is still considered an El Nino. It's just that it's a different type with completely different impacts. So during a typical El Nino, um, just a regular old El Nino, you can see that eastern half of the Pacific Ocean is above average, while the other half is just below average. Now, during an El Nino Modokai, which is called a central-based El Nino, this one's called an eastern-based, this one's called a central-based because the warm waters are centrally based in the Pacific Ocean. Right by the coast of South America, it is below average, and right by East Asia, it is above, uh, below average as well. And you may be wondering, okay, well, why are you even considering that an El Nino Madokai may be happening. Well, we don't really, there's no such thing as an El Nino Madokai outlook forecaster, but we just gotta look at the sea surface temperatures and we could tell a lot by, you know, from these sea surface temperatures without looking at any forecasts or predictions. So right now, as you could see, it's just warm all throughout. So neither it's an El Nino, it's neither an El Nino Madokai, it's, it's really somewhere in between an El Nino and an El Nino Madokai and a neutral. All, all of those three things combined. You can see that um, it is warm, so it's definitely, um, I think, going to be, you know, tilting from towards an El Nino rather than a neutral. But East Asia, a little bit below average. And the thing is that right now we're currently not um, experiencing below average temperatures right by South America, which would be an El Nino Madokai. But remember, if we were to look back at the PowerPoint presentation, if I were to go back here, look at the Nino regions, um, the Nino region that corresponds to an El Nino Madokai, oh my god, this is so long, sorry, uh, Okay, there we go. So an El Nino, um, right there, Nino 1 and 2 that correspond to an El Nino Madokai forming, or one of the correspondents, are right now falling in temperatures and becoming, more, you know, cooler and cooler. So this thing would probably turn blue within a couple of weeks. And this region right here, we don't really know, but it has been staying blue and getting a little bit more blue throughout the past several months I've been observing this. So an El Nino Madokai, Possible, yes. An El Nino, um, just an El Nino, eastern-based El Nino, possible, yes. More possible than a Madoki. Um, either one of those two is most likely to form. And now, okay, so, now, um, I just want to compare what an El Nino Madoki looks like compared to an El Nino. So an El Nino Madokai Madoki looks something like this in terms of the precip. You could see wetter than normal across the southeast, the east, and parts of the north and the midwest, and drier across the west. And you could see these two things have still the El Nino in front of their name. The first two letters, the first two words of their name are exactly the same. But they're completely different. You can see that this thing um, is wetter in the west and drier across the north, some places of the southeast and northeast, and just wetter across the central part of the country. So that is different. And I will show you in just or in just a minute the temperature um, differences between an El Nino and an El Nino Madokai. But um, assuming now, if you are really picky, assuming now that um, an El Nino Madokai does not form, and it's some sort of El Nino. So, if an El Nino forms, the chances of it being a weak El Nino are about 95%. The chances of it being a strong El Nino are so low that I would be more confident in a neutral staying all winter than an El Nino being strong. So, a weak to moderate El Nino looks something like this. Um, it's way different from just a El Nino 
as you could see I shown you earlier. So there are already some huge changes. You could see that the cold shots would be making it into the United States on average down to at least half of the Midwest, if not further south. The East Coast would be wet and potentially snowy as these storms ride up and that cold air is in place for these storms to tap into. And once it's cold enough with precip, that would produce snow. And you can see right here, merging branches can produce big major eastern snowstorms. So this year, I do think I may be actually releasing a video on it, why the Northeast will be experiencing um, some fairly fairly snowy conditions across the winter, I think. And the North, maybe not, you know, snowy in terms of record-breaking, but I think they have a better chance within weak to moderate El Nino with cold and snow than just the El Nino or even an El Nino Modoki. And then across the West should be mild to... You know, maybe not super above average, but mild, um, um, just slightly above average. And then the southwest should, around California, Nevada, Arizona, should be wet due to the um, subs, I think it's a subtropical jet stream passing through. So definitely very different from the, from the, just a regular El Nino. And... This is all just goes to show you how much these things vary. So this is a very tough call to make, very tough, you know, decision to make. And I would like to show you now the temperature differences that I actually pulled from previous years. So um, this is probably the most raw data you can get. I literally went onto this website, made my own anomalies. This is an El Nino. This is what a typical El Nino looks like November through March. And I compiled a bunch of El Nino years. You can see North um, basically, northern United States is above average, and southern United States is around average, maybe slightly below average in terms of temperatures. And then this is an El Nino Modokai, which is, again, still an El Nino, but it's a Modokai. And you can see the differences are huge. November to March, 2010, 1987, 2003, a bunch of other years. Cooler across the southeastern third of the country and warmer across the west especially the Northwest. And then this is just a weak to moderate El Nino that I've found a bunch of years, not a bunch, couple of years, and November through March again, the winter time. You can see the West being above average and the basically a lot of the portion of the Eastern part of the country could be average or below average in terms of temperatures. So what I would say right now and my biggest confidence is the Northwest or the West being a below average at especially the northwest or above average in terms of temperature solar sorry and i would also be confident in the southeast being uh, below average in terms of temperatures those are my two biggest confidence points right now whether the below average will extend into the northeast whether the above average will extend into the southwest i'm not too sure because there's still a lot to be solved so thank you guys so much for watching please consider liking the video please consider subscribing to my channel and i'll catch you all guys in the next episode